Have you ever thought about what's known about you? Like for real, every click, every swipe, every photo, like, no kidding, everything. It's 2016 and we're in the middle of the decade where we've gone from being like almost mysterious as humans to what will be completely known. I'm a data artist and I make work about the future of data about you. And I have thought about what's known about me. I actually kind of obsessively made a list. And, you know, I started with what was really public and, you know, thought about the computers at the pharmacy, the watch that kept track of my skin temperature. And every couple of days I think of something else, you know, like Amazon knows how fast I read a book because of my Kindle. They know if I cheat. Do I ever finish one? <laughs> And then, you know, on one hand, I thought, well, you know, this is actually, you know, how do I feel about this? It's a very rich, complex picture that I might even remember about myself. But on the other is like, should I worry? How's this going to turn out? What's going to happen in the future with all this data? You know, I've actually kind of always been very, very curious about the future. When, when I was a little kid, I was always the tallest one in the class. And, you know, I think maybe part of me just wanted to jump into my actual size. But I, I you know, everybody thinks it's great to be tall. But Alana and I just talked about it. It's actually, as a kid, it's horrible to be tall. When I was 13, I grew six inches in one year. I mean, it just didn't feel, maybe my body grew faster than the person inside. It just didn't feel like I fit, I didn't fit in. And somehow if I could see the future, I could figure it out. I could know who was I going to be? Who am I? You know, in college, I switched my major multiple times. I moved to new cities. I switched jobs after 20 years in the tech industry. Like, who am I? I went back to college to become an artist. I started initially making work about imagined time. Time had become these tiny, tiny little bits. And from my tech, from my, actually from my engineering background, I knew if you really want to study something, you measure it. So I thought, all right, let me keep track of all my time, like really write it down. And it's ridiculously hard. And so I Googled it and I, I was like, how do I do this? And I actually found this guy, Ben Lipkowitz. He'd been tracking every bit of his time, 24 hours a day. And it was like, oh my God, I love this. It looked exactly the way I'd imagined. I mean, I was making imagined time, and he was making real time, and they were like exactly the same. And I scraped it. I grabbed every speck of his data and downloaded it. And started cutting, pasting, color coded. And I thought his time was really gorgeous. I mean, it was really beautiful. It sort of set at this diagonal. It, it leaned into the future. It's kind of pushed forward because he sleeps on a 26-hour clock. He gets a couple extra hours out of every single day. In his time, it's very unique. It was very specific to him. But at the same time, I still wanted to measure something about me. And it's like, all right, how am I going to do this? And I realized, I'm going to measure my time while I sleep. I got this sleep tracker. It was an EEG. It's super, super accurate. Deep sleep, light sleep, right? And this was a chance for me to get a whole bunch of data about myself. And you're thinking I'm going to tell you it's great, but it was actually, it was, it was kind of crushing. I was so disappointed. It just wasn't who I thought I, I, I had thought I was this really great sleeper. And when I took a look at all my data, I was like barely, barely average. I mean, I'm like hanging on by my fingernails. And so I just was this like, it was this moment of real confrontation. It just wasn't who I thought I was. But at the same time, I didn't want um, to be the one that was jumping into bed every night with this thing strapped around my forehead. I measured almost 1,000 nights of sleep. So I got one for my husband. And he goes, OK, OK, I'll do this. But I'm a horrible sleeper. I'm terrible. Just you wait and see. And it actually turns out he's an amazing sleeper most of the time, but he only remembers the bad. I thought, oh, God, that's so him. <laughs> what if this can kind of measure, what if data can almost measure your personality? So I 
I jumped in right away. I made, I created a rule system, color coded, you know, you know, deep sleep, REM sleep. I took the light sleep that's kind of known as um, trash sleep by sleep researchers, and I folded it up out of the way and only left the good stuff, and created what it would be like an artist algorithm. Cut, made a whole bunch of it, put it in a gallery show in Los Angeles, sleep patterns, and it got a ton of press. I mean, it got a ton of press. And the company that made that little sleep device, they find me and go, you know, they emailed me, Lori, what can we do to help you? <laughs> I, 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 but I, re I was like, what should I ask for? More data. I ask them for more data, and I got a chance to see my sleep data compared to a bunch of others. And they really, they're really specific. I mean, they're like, kind of like Ben Lipquist's data. They're very unique to each of us, almost like a fingerprint. They were like a picture of each of us, a portrait, a data portrait. And I, in my mind, I started to think of them, this is like a new kind of data selfie. And I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. This is, this is a good idea. And I, uh, I doubled down and decided I'm going to, I mean, at this point, I'd only been measuring my sleep. And I decided I'm going to measure anything easy, anything that lets me live in the future when measurement is really like, it's going to be embedded in our clothes, the, you know, the food we eat, the things we swallow, tattoos on our skin, every device we touch, everything that we encounter is going to be measuring us in some way. And what would that world feel like? Maybe I could live in the future and use myself for research. It, and it's kind of, I mean, it really is, it's kind of what an artist does is you take the world you care about and try to explain that to others. And I have this fantasy that, and I've told, I mean, I actually tell all my friends this, if you, as an artist sees something really real, sometimes it gets proven as real science. So I'm taking this super seriously and started studying patterns in the data particularly the unconscious things, the things that are you're not rationally choosing, to somehow start to look at the patterns, these proportions of you, almost like, like a neural Fibonacci. And I could see that we, we like routine. We tend to cluster. We go the same places. And it's like, well, all right, how would these patterns look to us if it wasn't something we looked at a screen but what if we could actually experience them, right, large scale on the walls in the spaces? What if we could step into them? You know, textured wallpaper, intelligent walls, 3D printed, biofabricated. Right? I, I've talked to synthetic biologists. That is not a crazy idea, right? And actually, if it's cellular bacteria, it, you know, you spray it. They'll dissolve. I mean, you can completely recycle. You move to a new apartment, shh, off it goes, grow a new one in the new place. So after some months, my studio was filled with these cut and drawn patterns. And I'm right, I'm super paying attention. And they felt, um, you know, this is months and I'm surrounded by this. They felt, they felt like me. They felt organic. They felt personal. They felt human. They were soothing, almost comforting. Wait, 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 maybe, maybe that's the whole point. You know, what if, what if patterns are a way to see yourself using the language of art? Because art makes data sticky. It gets you to look. It has emotion. It holds you. You know, humans are pattern recognition machines. Numbers are very abstract to us. But we recognize pattern intuitively. We feed on pattern. So when I look at the future, maybe that's exactly what happens. It's your data abstracted as pattern and played back to you as art. And I find a way to get all my data, all of it, and use it to understand who can I be. It's just, I mean, it's so hard to see ourselves. I think about everything that's measured about us, and it's just got to be more than advertising or 10,000 steps. It, it's, it's just so, it's so much about who we are as humans. It feels like it's about identity. Who am I? 
Maybe it's a new way to see ourselves. It's using technology as a shortcut to mindfulness, a way to boost our immune system, because maybe our brains can't tell the difference between meditative self-reflection, you know, um, and the intake of a data selfie. It's good, right? It's the way an artist thinks about science. And it, but if that doesn't really flip it, if, art, if that doesn't talk you into it, I think the thing that starts to make it irresistible to me is overcoming this feeling of powerlessness over the data. You know, we know we're getting tracked. 85% of us, this is a brand new study, 85% of us are really uncomfortable with what's getting gathered about us, what's getting tracked. But two-thirds of us have given up. We've thrown in the towel. We're powerless. There's nothing we can do. I'm getting tracked, and all I'm ever going to get out of it is some lousy ads. But what if we could take back our data, reclaim it? It's not about getting paid for the data. It's overcoming that opacity. It's just so one-sided. I want my data. See, I see a future where companies are pressured to give the data back to us, to make it two-way. I want my data. I think, you know, I've talked to some of them, and I think it's as simple, you know, I think it's that they just don't know how to give it to us, and they don't know what we do with it. But I think it's really much, much, much simpler. I really think social pressure, we, will pressure companies to make our data two-way, to give some of it back. And I think an ecosystem of apps will let us play with it. And what if the data actually turns out it looks like pattern? It looks like art in the spaces that we live. <laughs> I want my data. I want what I dreamed as a little kid, to be able to see into the future and understand who I could be, who I could become, to anticipate. <laughs> Data is irresistibly powerful to human understanding. So here's my call. So take back your data and turn it into art. Thank you. <laughs>